Welcome to St Wilfrid's Church Online. It's great that you can be here today. Today we celebrate that Jesus is Christ the King. We'll be looking at what it means for each of us that he is King. Because we can't believe that Jesus is Lord and King without it impacting our lives. Now next Sunday is Advent. Yes, we've reached that time already. I can't believe that is possible. Now we've been planning our Advent and Christmas services, but as I'm sure you all imagine, with COVID restrictions, it's proving very, very hard to do so. Much of what we will be doing will be online. Yes, it will be very different this year. So look out for more details shortly. But please, please don't get upset if we're forced to make even more changes. We really don't know what's going to happen over the coming weeks. Now, we've also had lots of great feedback about us filming here in church. So we've bought and we've borrowed more equipment that makes that happen. The problem is actually our wonderful Trinity windows and the light. So we've borrowed some lighting for this week. It's wonderful to do this, but it does make it harder. So I'm sorry, but some weeks it might just not be possible to do it. Again, please don't get upset as we try and make the most of our limited resources. In a moment, we will sing our first hymn, At the Name of Jesus. But before we do, let's pray together. Now I'm going to leave the words of this prayer on the screen to give you time to read and reflect upon it first before we say it. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Thank you. 
in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ. Let's confess our sins in penitence and in faith. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring you back to himself forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In today's collect or special prayer, we recognise that Jesus Christ is our King. Are we willing to do as he asks of us, to follow and serve him? God the Father, Help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. We can't follow Jesus on our own. We need God's help. So let's pray together that he will fire us up to do so. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's now declare our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Two more songs now. Please do worship with us. As always, the words are on the screen.
and stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty?
Today's Bible reading is read by Carol. Katie and Ian will then bring us their thoughts and reflections. Good morning. The reading today is taken from Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 23. Thanksgiving and prayer. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation so that you may know him better. I pray the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head, over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is King. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving and prayer. Reading this passage reminds me to be thankful for all the good things in my life. All the people, friends, family, people I know at St Wilfrid's. Sometimes it's easy to forget to be thankful, especially when things aren't going to plan. But Paul talks about being thankful for Jesus and his people. And he pray prays that we all get to know him and experience God's love. In prayer, he is celebrating God's great power. Jesus is Jesus our King and how he fills our lives and how sometimes when we think all is lost and not going to plan we must look for the positives and be thankful. Jesus is King and I will extol him. Give him the glory and honour his name. He reigns on high, enthroned in the heavens. Word of the Father, exalted for us. Today in the church's calendar is the festival of Christ the King. It's when we're asked to reflect on what it means for Jesus to be King. What is a King? That might be a strange question you're thinking, but I don't think it's the easiest one for us actually to answer. Because we live in a democracy where, well in theory at least, all citizens have a say in how our nation is ruled. Yes, we have a monarchy. Our wonderful, amazing queen has ruled Britannia for 68 years. What an amazing record, isn't she incredible? But we all know that as a constitutional monarch, she has, well, quite limited power. The rule decisions are not made in Buckingham Palace. They're made down the road in Whitehall, particularly in Downing Street. Now to Paul's readers, living under a Roman emperor who certainly knew how to rule with an iron fist, they would know firsthand what is a king. In their day, kings most certainly ruled, really ruled their kingdom. Now that might sound pretty obvious, but the reality was total domination by the king. We still see this today in some nations. We tend to call those kind of rulers, those kind of leaders, dictators, and the particularly nasty ones, we call them despots. 
So time and time again, kings lived it up in grandeur. They did so whilst their subjects were expected to do all that they demanded of them. To pay their taxes, particularly so that the king could rule powerfully and of course live in luxury. To fight wars, so that, that the king might remain in power and to grow their kingdom. They're expected to serve without question. Absolute, absolute loyalty was demanded. Anything else was treason. And many kings even demanded their subjects to worship them. And then, of course, that was certainly true of the Caesars who dominated the Roman world. Jesus is king. Now, Jesus is not a king like either of these two models. Because he neither welds absolute power and control, ruthlessly controlling his subjects, neither does he remain simply a figurehead around which others jostle for power. Some of you might be wondering why I chose this reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians today. Because nowhere in it does it actually say Jesus is king. Well, I don't think it has to. Because Paul, in his usual impassioned way, writes of who Jesus really is. Jesus is risen from the dead. He is king over death. Let's think about that for a moment. Let's take time to process what that means. No earthly king, none of them, ever has won a battle against death. So this alone shows us that Jesus is king on a much, much higher, greater level than any king that has ever lived. Paul tells us that Jesus is seated at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. He doesn't sit on a throne in a palace or a castle down here on earth. He is seated in the highest place possible, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, as Paul writes. Now, you could think that this is, well, a bit aloof. God is up there in some sort of heavenly place, on his own, in his own world. But actually that's not true, because Jesus is not a distant or absent ruler who doesn't care. Far from it, he couldn't be further from the truth. Not only will everyone who's ever lived worship him, it is God who has placed Jesus as king, as king of kings. It is God who has placed all things, yes, the whole world and beyond, under his feet. And it is God who has pointed Jesus to be head over everything. I really like how the New Living Translation has translated verses 22 and 23. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things, for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Jesus is the head, the king, the ruler over everything. And the amazing, remarkable truth is that we, his church, share in it. It's for our benefit. Yes, we share in Jesus' kingdom and even in his kingship because together, as his church, we are his body. Perhaps we need another moment to let that sink in because that is incredible. I'm convinced that when we really catch what's, what this means, we catch this deep inside. That's when our lives and our faith as Christians is unlocked in a new way. Jesus is king, and he shares his authority 
with his church. That's you, that's me. Wow. He does it because he calls us to partner with him in building his kingdom. Jesus, Jesus is building a kingdom like no other. It's well beyond even the greatest earthly kingdom, empire, dynasty, authority. And he calls you to be at the heart of it. Jesus is king and I will extol him. Give him the glory and honour his name. He reigns on high, enthroned in the heavens. Word of the Father, exalted for us. As we approach Advent and Christmas in this most unusual of years, where our normal life and expectations have been upended, Jesus is calling us to worship him as the ultimate king. A king like no other. A king more powerful than any other. A king who calls us not just to be his subject, but to be his friend. He calls us to be led by him each day, to be filled with his Holy Spirit so that we might serve and we might play our part as he builds his kingdom. We can't build his kingdom, that's his job, because he is the king. But remarkably, and what a privilege, he asks us to play our part, our part in the building of his kingdom. Now, if this seems a bit challenging, even impossible, please do not fear because he loves you, he cares for you, he is for you. And God is a good God. He is the definition of goodness. He's a God, a friend who will never leave you, who will never let you down. So let's use this next song. Let's allow him to speak to us, but also to receive from him all that he has for us today to allow him to inspire us afresh. Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I rule fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where i hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song you are good you're good
in our prayers. The internet is great for keeping in touch, but it's amazing that without any equipment we can have contact with the creator of the universe and King of Kings. So wherever we are, let's pray for our fellow Christians and for the needs of the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great worldwide fellowship of believers of all colours languages and styles of worship. We thank you that Jesus is King of all the earth. We remember before you now Christians and leaders in countries where there are unstable governments in Europe, Africa, the Middle East and the USA. We ask that extremes are moderated and peaceful relationships established. We pray for people in desperate need here and overseas through economic pressure, military conflict, natural disaster or disease. Give wisdom to leaders making policies and decisions, particularly those that affect these. That affect these. Those. Pray for all work working in hospitals, medical research and relief agencies that you will enable them to work miracles despite the problems they face. 
let us each remember one country, one person, or one agency, and ask God's help for them. See, and ask. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are indeed King of all the earth. Today we pray for those for whom we learned in the past about you. We pray for present-day teachers and tutors, their pupils and students, particularly in schools and colleges called Christ the King. Help them in their patience and understanding, particularly at this time. We pray for all chaplains and Christian unions to have spiritual insight and wisdom to identify and support anyone suffering emotionally or mentally. We pray for parents and all who influence young people to lead them into a deeper understanding of your ways and a knowledge of your love. Lord, we want the future leaders of the next generation to be people of integrity and spiritual depth. Let's each pray for one institution or young person who needs Jesus' help in this rapidly changing world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, you've called people down the ages to put aside their fears and to go out in Christian service. We pray for those who are separated from friends and families by the pandemic, that you'll protect them from COVID-19, inspire them to find new ways of sharing your love and the gospel, wherever they are. We pray for the Church Mission Society, Mission Aviation, Tear Fund and all organisations seeking to extend your kingdom. Please guide any people at crossroads in their lives as they seek your will and lead them into spheres of Christian service. Let's pray for one missionary or a possible recruit whom we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for people worried about how to celebrate Christmas. We pray that every Christian, every Christmas postage stamp will remind someone of the reason for the season. We pray for our fellow Christians in the churches nearby and for new members of church councils particularly St Wilfred's Cow Plain. Protect and guide them and give the joy, them the joy of seeing your saving power in their lives and in our own lives and the lives of those near and dear to us as we remember them before you now. Join together wherever we are in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. This cornerstone, 
solid, solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, God is a God in His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since grace has lost, back next Sunday, Advent Sunday, for church online at 10.45 on Facebook and YouTube. And do join us this week for morning prayer, Wednesday Bible study and faith stories on Friday. At the start of December, we are having a focus on prayer. Our next prayer hour on Zoom is on Wednesday the 2nd at 7.30. Please join us if you possibly can. And on Thursday the 3rd, we will be holding a day of prayer. Details will follow, but please put these dates in your diary. This is how Matthew ends his Gospel. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus is King. Jesus is our King. So this week, let's worship, follow and serve him by taking up this call. Let's choose to be his witnesses. Let's choose to pray and work so that others might also become his disciples. May Christ the King, whose kingdom is above all other kingdoms, strengthen you so that you may transform the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now if you're watching live, do please join us now on Zoom for coffee. Christ the author of all things, every heart adore. Christ the ever.